Do you love working with scrap wood, but you just need a little bit of inspiration? Well, this video has tons for you. Hello everyone, welcome back to DIY Beauty on Purpose. My name is Leonip and let's get started. All right, so these two pieces of scrap wood came off of a frame from a house that we were flipping several months ago. And um, yeah, I'm gonna use them. So I'm gonna remove everything from them. The um, hardware there, as well as that piece of um, framing that is in the front of that one. Met him on a sunny day in late July and everything turned upside down. Although they are both the same width, they are not the same length. So right now what I'm doing, I'm just figuring out how I need to make cuts. Now the shorter one, it's not straight straight, so it's at an angle. So I'm just going to mark it here using my square, making sure that I have it nicely, nicely straight. And then I am going to cut them, making sure that they're both the same length and I used my miter saw. I'm sorry I don't have that footage. My camera stopped filming as I was filming the cuts, but nonetheless, um, that is, um, anyways, how I cut them. <laughs> I'm gonna give them both two coats of rust chalk band in the linen white. Just tell me how we lost track of everything but each other I honestly don't know And tell me how we messed up Drifting away from each other Didn't want to let you go oh, oh, oh. Cause we wanted different things And I have to do with it But it's not easy So tell me how to let go while the wood dries, I am now going to take these two mason jars and I am going to also take this Dollar Tree chains. These are those that you use for hanging baskets. I am going to remove all the chains and separate them. And um, I'm also going to use some zip ties from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use two of them on each mason jar. This is to create kind of like a band around the top of each jar. So I'm just going to join them together zip them up but not tightly at first i'm going to leave them kind of loose at first because i want to be able to thread um or link no thread yes <laughs> a couple of the links on each side of the mason jar now i am going to just make sure i remove that clip because i'm not going to need them and i'm just kind of eye out and measure how long i want the chains to be i'm going to then use some pliers to separate some of the links just so that I can remove them. I'm also going to use the pliers to um, just separate the links so that I can then add them or thread them onto the zip ties. Ever since I got a good look in his eyes, I just knew that he was special. He said he wanted to take it slow, but I couldn't help that I wanted to take it to the next level because I wanted that great love like standing in the middle. and now that i have them threaded and nicely tightened i am going to cut the excess off of the zip ties and i'm going to do the same thing on the other mason jar all right so now i'm going to take my 
palm sander and a 220 grit sandpaper and I'm going to heavily distress each board focusing on the edges. I am now going to use a couple of these hooks that I get on Amazon. I get them all the time and I always have them on hand because they're so versatile and they're very inexpensive. I am going to just kind of measure out where I need to screw them in. And I got really lucky and look how close that is to the edge, but it worked out perfect. Now, if it would have been a lot longer, I would have just removed some links from the chain and just made it smaller. I'm going to screw them in using some screws and I'll do the same thing on the other board as well. I should have added the claw hooks before I added the hooks, but I didn't. So I'm doing it now. I'll add one on each one. And now I'm going to add this grassy florals that I get on Amazon as well. And I think these turned out super adorable and so, so inexpensive. The mason jars were thrifted and look how beautiful it looks. All right, so for this next DIY, I'm going to use this piece of scrap board. I have no idea what the measurements are. <laughs> it was already this size. I found it in my garage. So I'm just going to sand it down smooth and give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk band in the linen white. This wooden welcome I got at the Target dollar spot for $3 and I love how thick it is and how just, just good quality it is. I'm going to give it one coat of this flat black from Rust-Oleum and let it fully dry. I am going to attach it to the board using hot glue and I'm going to place it kind of towards the top and a little bit tilted. And now I'm going to use this farmhouse style coat hook. I love them. I also keep them on hand. I have them on my Amazon store. A lot of these supplies, guys, and tools that I am using today, I do have on my Amazon store, which is linked down below if you're interested in checking them out. So I'm just going to attach them using some screws. And then, of course, um, I did have... <laughs> oh, I got to laugh at myself. This screw was giving me a hard time. <laughs> But anyways, here we are attempting to screw it in. And guess what? I also forgot to add the claw hooks before <laughs> I added the hook. Oh, Lord, help me. So anyways, I added a couple of claw hooks and we'll be done with this one. For a second 
Cause there is no one other than me that can make you feel the way you feel when I hold you. I think I said enough. All right, friends, so for this next DIY, I am going to use this piece of scrap board. As you can tell, we used it to write down some measurements. <laughs> I'm going to sand it down and give it a couple coats of rust -Oleum chalk paint. I'm also going to use this tomato planter hanging thingy from the Dollar Tree. I'm only going to use two of the rings, the small one and the medium one. So like I said, I'm just gonna sand down the board and then give it two coats of the rust -Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. So being that this is a dollar, I think it's a great deal because it has the three rings and it has three of those stakes that I think would be really cool to use for another DIY. So I'm going to keep everything that I do not use today for future DIYs. I'm just going to use my wire cutters to carefully remove each ring. It's not hard to cut, it's just plastic, but I just wanna make sure I don't cut the rings in mistake. And then I'm gonna take them out to my garage and spray them with a metallic gold spray paint. It takes time to get it right. Sleepless days and nights. We just need a little more. Just a little time for you and I. So stay Once everything was dry, actually the rings were a little tacky, so I wish I would have let them dry, but you know, I get impatient. <laughs> I'm going to take the larger one, and as you can see there, I'm going to kind of squish it a bit, and I'm going to place it inside the smaller one, that way it'll kind of hold. So I made the mistake of hot gluing the base, as you can see here, before I did the next step, which you'll see here in a minute. So I ended up having to remove it anyways and then hot glue it again because I wanted to add a little bit of jute twine to each um, side where each of the ring connect. It'll keep it sturdy and I think it just adds a little bit of a rustic to the glam that is already on the rings and I just like the way it looks. So I did that and then or I did that on both sides and then I hot glue them to the base for the second time. All right, to finish it off, I added this little um, jar candle from the Dollar Tree. I think the, the top, the lid matches perfectly the rings. And then I added some boxwood to finish it off. For this next DIY, we are going to use this piece of scrap wood and some Dollar Tree decals and we're going to make a beautiful farmhouse sign. We're going to dry brush some of this rust -Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. Just a rough dry brush. I want it to look a little bit of the distressed side. Once the paint was dry, I am now going to use my palm sander and a 220 grit sandpaper and distress the board even more. 
once the board was distressed as I wanted it. Now I'm going to take one of those Dollar Tree decals and I'm just going to place it right on top. And I think this one is absolutely beautiful. I am going to now measure on each side even places so that I can place some screws and add a way to hang the sign from. I am not going to take one of these Dollar Tree hanging basket chains and I'm going to remove one of the chains. I am going to place or remove links as needed so that I have enough to place around each screw. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to add some florals. I just thought it would be super cute to add a little bit of greenery and florals to this one. And I'm just going to place it right on the top of the sign. And I think this one is one of my favorite. It turned out absolutely beautiful. a song inside your soul waiting to be heard sing it aloud you've written every word oh out of the silence and into the unknown louder and louder let go behind closed eyes All right, so for this next sign, I am going to use another one of those boards. This is part of that same board I used in the first sign. This is just part of the leftover. And it's around the same size, and I'm just going to give it another rough uh, one coat of Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint and the Linen White. And then once again, sanded it down with a 220 grit sandpaper, this time just focusing more on the edges. Once I was done with that, I am now going to take this Dollar Tree decal. It says, let your dreams take flight, which is beautiful. And this, this is going to be a really good example of me just kind of placing it lightly. And then until I have the other one placed in, in place, and that way I can move it as needed. What a beautiful, beautiful color gold tone. And I am using a lot of white because these decals just look great against that white. But I think any of these and any other color, lighter color, I think will look great. Like maybe like a light pink or a baby blue will look very beautiful as well. So now that I have it where I need it to be, I'm just going to press it down. And this in this one, I am going to have these... Um, uh, little eye hooks <laughs> on the board so I'm just going to screw a screw on the sides just about a half inch from the top and then unscrew it back out and that's just to give me a nice hole so that I can screw in the eye hooks and then I am going to take a small screwdriver to help me out because it does get tight there and that way it'll be all the way in and I'll do that on the same side as well or on the other side as well Me every night. 
I am now going to take some more of that jute twine from Walmart. You can also use the jute twine from Dollar Tree. This is just what I have on hand. Um, Walmart has a larger quantity and it's uh, pretty inexpensive. So I do like to buy it there. I'm just going to thread it through each eye hook and then I'm just going to tie it on the top and it's going to have like a double jute twine um, hanging rope and I think it looks super cute. Another beautiful, beautiful design with that Dollar Tree decal. All right, guys, so for this next DIY, I'm going to uh, create a very uh, sturdy lantern. I know you've probably seen a ton of them around YouTube, Pinterest, uh, you name it. I just wanted to create my own. I did this a couple, uh, about a year back, and I still have it. It's so sturdy. I'm using scrap wood, guys. I cut these pieces to size. Again, I don't remember the size, but I want to say it's, again, about 14, 15 inches here and there. And I'm just going to sand them down. I'm not too worried about it being super smooth because I'm not looking for I'm looking for a rustic farmhouse style lantern here so I'm just going to sand it over everything and make sure that everything is nicely dusted afterwards and then I'm going to start putting things together I'm going to use my brad nailer uh, and I'm just going to start placing four of the longer pieces in each corner to create the sides or not the sides but the corner of the lantern I also use wood glue just for a more sturdy bond All right, so then I flipped it over and I just um, added the the other bottom or top part. They're, right now they're mirroring each other. And I'm just going to use the same thing, wood glue and brad nails. And then I decided to add a smaller piece of a 1x4, but really this was more part of a, I think it was a drawer. I just had on hands a piece of it and I just cut it to fit uh, right on top. I just wanted to have that lantern look know what I'm talking about and so I actually decided later on to add another little piece right on top um, because um, I just wanted it to have a little bit more height as well as just um, detail I guess so now I'm just going to add some one by twos in some of the edges and that way it'll just kind of finish it off and just make it look a little bit more finished So here's that little extra one by four that I did add eventually right on top. And then this is a knob from a drawer that I had on hand. I just wood glued it um, and let it fully dry. So this is the next day here. I'm just gonna give everything two coats. In this case, I am using latex paint. Um, uh, this is just regular household paint, guys. Nothing fancy here. And I'm just gonna give it everything, inside and out, two coats.
once it was dry, it was time to distress. Now, in this case, instead of sanding, I'm going to use uh, some latex paint. And I'm just going to start focusing on the edges with a small brush. Um, I wanted to distress. Uh, I could have distressed with a sander. However, the wood was light um, in, in the tone underneath. So um, it wouldn't have had that big of a distress look, in my opinion. So I just wanted to try something different. And I just started to distress using the paint. And again, I just focused all the edges and just very sporadic, you know, nothing. Uh, I'm not looking for perfection and just using my creativity. I added a, a few little evergreen picks and a few candles and look how cute this looks guys i used scrap wood it is so sturdy and i just absolutely love the way this looks it actually could be used in any season as long as you just change whatever is inside but just for winter you know you just have those candles and it just looks so warm and cozy i just loved it one i'm going to take this piece of one by four and i have no idea where it came from but we're going to use them to make some coasters so i want the squares or the pieces to be exactly square so i measured the width of the board even though it says it's a one by four is really more of a let's see three and a quarter by three and a half <laughs> so I, I took him to my miter saw and cut four pieces and now I'm going to sand the edges to make sure they're nice and smooth and there are no splinters. Once I was done with the sanding, I dusted them. And now I'm going to stain them using Rust-Oleum Chalked Aged Glaze. This is their brown tone. And uh, yeah, basically I'm just going to stain them like regular stain. Uh, the beautiful thing about this uh, glaze is that it is water-based. So it doesn't it dries quicker. It comes off of your hands easier. And it doesn't have like a strong scent. Now I'm going to take these Dollar Tree little pumpkins. And I am going to fill in the little holes. Because I don't want to be able to. I don't want to see that on the coasters. And I'm just going to use some spackle to do that. And then I let it dry. I am now going to paint the little pumpkins using Rust-Oleum Milk Paint in their Venetian Yellow. Which is beautiful guys. Beautiful color. And I'm going to give it just one coat. Once the paint was dry, I then took a 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to lightly sand them just to smooth them out and also to just kind of tone down the yellow. I am now going to use some wood glue to attach them to the top of each coaster and I'm going to tilt them just a tiny bit, but I'm also going to secure them with brad nails. Now you are able to see the brad nail. I'm okay with that. You, I could have just used the wood glue, but I want to make sure they're nice, nicely attached. And I don't mind seeing the brad nail. I think it gives it a little bit more character and a little bit more kind of like rustic farmhouse look to it. And then once that was done, it was time to seal everything. Of course, these are going to be coasters. So you want to make sure that they are sealed in case water or any spills gets on them. So I'm going to use main wax polycrylic in the clear and this is the semi-gloss and I gave it three coats and then we'll be done with this one
do. I'm going to take these four scraps of wood and I'm going to make little kind of home shapes. I am going to draw some angle lines here, but honestly, after I drew the lines, it was basically just making some like 45 degree angle cuts. And um, so we did that using the miter saw. I cleaned them, dusted them. Now these one, I didn't sand right away because I'm going to distress them by sanding them. And so I sand them later. I'm going to paint them in different colors. This taller one, I am going to paint in that same milk paint by Rust-Oleum in the Venetian yellow. And then the, um, I'm just going to do two coats and I'm just going to do the top of each little house, not the sides, not the back. On this one, I am using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. And again, I gave it two coats. For this one, I am using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the coastal blue. And for this last one, it's the smaller one. I am using Dixie Belle chalk paint in the Kutsu, which is a beautiful green. I just recently used to redo a little side table and it is absolutely beautiful color, especially for fall. All right, so waited till they were fully dry and now I'm just going to sand everything down and give it more of a farmhouse distressed look. To finish them off, I'm just going to add some jute rope to a couple of them. On this white one, I'm just going to uh, tie it around in the middle and make a simple knot in the front. And then on the blue one, I am going to wrap it around three times and tie it in the back. And that's it for these. And I think they turned out absolutely stunning. These are two by fours and again, they're scraps that I had in the garage. I'm just gonna kinda eye out where I wanna make a cut. And I took it to my miter saw and cut them. And these I am going to sand down. They were really, really splintery. And I'm gonna sand them down on every side of the boards. All right, for this, I'm going to use a paint. This is a actually a fabric paint that Arteza sent me. And um, it's a beautiful yellow tone. I want to say it's their golden yellow. I'll have, it, I'll have it listed down below for you. And I'm going to paint all the sides, including the top. Once the paint was dry, I'm now going to also distress them, focusing mainly on the edges. All 
And now I'm going to drill a hole on the top of each one. I'm going to do that using my drill and a drill bit. I'm not sure what the size is. I just basically grabbed one that um, fits the little uh, kind of like stick that I'm going to be using to secure a, uh, a stem because these, these are going to be tall pumpkins. After I drilled holes in Dollar Tree stems, I'm now going to fill in the holes in each pumpkin and I'm going to cut the excess, leaving about half an inch of the stem or the, or the little stick so that I can fill in the hole with hot glue again on the wood stem and then just place it in there and that way it'll be nice and secure. And to add a little detail, I'm going to take these leftover leaves from, I think it was cotton stems from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to hot glue them to the two taller ones. And guys, we'll be done. And these are so timeless. I can't wait to put these in my own home and my decorations because they go perfectly with the yellow that I um, got or that I have on my fall decor this year. I'm going to take these two pieces of scrap 1x4s. I mean, guys, if these aren't scrap, I don't know what is. <laughs> they were dirty. They had holes. It was just a mess. But I love it. I love when I find pieces of wood that have so much character, history on them. So basically, I'm going to make a box. It's going to be a very simple box. So I'm just going to eye out again, kind of like where the center is. And then cut two pieces for these sides. And then I have them right there. I dusted them and cleaned them. Now I'm going to paint these using a scraper. Now this is a different technique I have never used. So basically what I do is uh, take some paint on the scraper and then just start wipe like kind of like spreading it. And um, and of course not with a lot of uh, paint on the scraper. And this will give it a very weathered look. Almost as if it's been outdoors weathering in the elements and I just love the way this turned out, guys. It's beautiful. Never tried this technique. And I am definitely going to use it again. And I did that on all the boards. Only on the outside part as well as the edges.
All right, now it's time to put everything together. I'm gonna use wood glue and brad nails to build the box. And it's a simple box, guys. So basically is adding glue and brad nailing. And as long as everything matches and is even on the edges, we are good to go. Like she stole my heart Without knowing she did But I guess that it will pass Yeah, I can't be the only one Who got lost inside the blue of those eyes I've gotta let her go For the bottom piece, I am going to use a piece of leftover cardboard this is from a box that I got from a shipment from Amazon. And I could have used wood. I didn't have a piece of wood that was this large. I did have a piece of paneling. But honestly, guys, cardboard is perfect because what I'm going to put in it is pumpkins. So no big deal. I used the bottom of the box to trace the perfect size for the cardboard to be. And then I'm just going to cut it using my blade knife. And then I'm going to attach it to the bottom of the box using my electric stapler. Then once everything was nice and secure, I added some pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. And look how beautiful this box looks, guys. I am in love with this box. It just looks weathered. It is just beautiful. I love it. Look out, here she comes. I found this at jossinmain.com and I just love the way it looks. It has that rustic farmhouse look, but almost modern at the same time. And it's $160. So I'm going to try to make it for a lot less. I'm out here in the garage and I'm going to start making some cuts. This is what I'm going to use as my base. So it has that rectangular, I guess size and then i'm gonna come in my messy garage i promise we cleaned it and it just gets messy every time and this is what i'm gonna use i have tons of these like small pieces of wood which i'm excited to actually use i'm gonna start ripping them and what i mean by that is just um you know like cutting them into smaller sizes that will kind of match the look of the original inspiration piece and then start staining Alright guys, so here I am using my table saw to make cuts. 
These are all scrap pieces of wood that you saw right there in that corner. Even the base that I'm using was part of a haul that I did um, when I picked up some um, scrap pieces of wood and boards at the hardware store. So these were all, well, the pieces, the, the ones that I'm cutting here were all free because I already had them and they were just scrap. The board, I believe, was maybe like 75 cents because it was in their scrap pieces of wood and then the only thing that i actually purchased for this project was the trim i didn't have a long enough piece of wood to trim out this piece of um wall decor so i did have to buy that but it was only like a dollar 60 something like that so basically that's all i spent and i already have a ton of stains that i use to give them all the different colors because i do a lot of furniture flip and so i have already all these stains on hand so again i am just cutting them lengthwise as you can see i am trying to find different pieces of scrap wood that are different sizes different thickness even different materials because when you're staining them they will stain different but I, I'm, I'm that's what I want because I want to recreate somewhat um, as close as possible as to the original so now I'm using the miter saw to just cut them in smaller pieces so they are a little bit more manageable and I'm just using um, not, not even measuring I'm just cutting so this part was the most tedious but almost fun at the same time because it's like putting together a puzzle and there is no right or wrong way. I am just placing these boards, moving, changing, uh, yeah. Now the only thing that I did do that I didn't show is once I had everything in place, I did have to cut, measure and cut some smaller pieces just for some of the edge parts because I want to leave a half inch rim all around so that I can trim this a little bit later but that's basically I'm just going to put everything together and then start staining why don't we say that it's too late for us now why do we stay when I blame you for the things that weigh me down cause in the echo of your sound So I have moved my shop outdoors in the backyard as I'm um, going to start staining here as my kiddos are swimming back there. But uh, yeah, so let's get staining. So I am now staining and basically I have already started with the darker color, which is the Briar Smoke by Verithane. It's one of my favorite stains and um, I am just... I brought the whole thing already. I didn't want to move these pieces because it took me a while. So I basically brought the whole thing outside and now I am just picking and just kind of following my instincts on what I think, what color should go in each piece. And again, there's no right or wrong way. I am just having fun and just staining away. I got stain on my legs, stain on my arms, but hey, that's why we DIY, right? Because it's fun so basically i am using five different stains and i'm going to list them all in the description box i know i use sun bleached i think that's what it's called very or oh, briar smoke i use golden oak weathered i think it was weathered oak I, I used five of them so i'll have them um the list of the names on the bottom in the description box and here I'm just finalizing some of the last few colors. Um, that's, this is, I think this is the weathered gray I used. Um, again, just picking here and there, very random. Try to make it as random as possible, but not stressing if some of the colors are similar next to each other. Because the original piece had similar colors together and that was fine. And this is, this is actually the last color, um, the sun bleached which is actually really cool. It's almost like a whitewash. It's very nice. And I did mention, I didn't mention earlier, but I did cut two two by fours. Um, as you can see, those are going to be the ones where the little plants or pots are going to sit on um, because the original piece had two little kind of like shelves 
um, within the peas. So I did cut those and I did include those in the, you know, in the, in the peas. Why don't we say that it's too late for us now? Why do we stay when I blame you for the things that weigh me down? All right, so now we're back inside. Everything is dry, everything is cut. Now is the time to put things together. I am now just kind of pressing things and I wanna make sure it is as even as possible that there is a about a half inch space on the rim. And I already cut the top and the bottom trim for it using a one by two from the hardware store. And now I'm just kind of dry fit them so that I can measure the two sides and be able to have a good fit. Why don't we say that it's too late for us now? Why do we stay? All right, so now it's time to put everything together with glue and nails. So I'm gonna use wood glue and I'm gonna use brad nails. Now, if you do not have like a brad nailer, you can certainly just use wood glue if you wanna recreate something like this, if you're using wood. But if you're not using wood and you're using foam board or you're using anything else, you can use any glue you want, hot glue, any regular glue you want. So I'm just gonna use wood glue and All right, guys, brad so here nails. I am. So what I decided to do was to push out just over the ledge of the table. And that way I can go from underneath and nail all the pieces. So I'm doing the trim first, as you can see. Once I have all the trim put in place, then I'm gonna start putting the pieces. So what I'm doing is so that I don't have to remove everything and put them back together. I'm just gonna go row by row. Passing on the street, are you waiting for peace? Ships are filling up fast, are you ready for ease? So I'm going to remind you what the original looked like. And this is what mine looked like. I am so proud of this work. It was so much work, but it was so worth it. I think it looks very similar. And I did this using scrap wood. Wow. Forget bad memories and leave those hurt and knees behind. Birds are filling up the sky. Are you And this time around, I am going to work on this beautiful uh, collage of farmhouse kitchen wall decor that I saw on Wayfair.com. And I thought it would be a perfect uh, project for me to do for this video. It is $98.99 on their website, and I thought I can definitely recreate this for a lot less using right, some so wood I'm scraps. You. I know I'm always saying I got this off of scrap piece of wood out of my garage. This is where I come and grab my pieces of scrap wood. So I have new new wood like this one. So this one's I'm gonna use for a project. But when I'm done with that project, then whatever's left, I always keep it. So I'll show you my little spot here. I often cut here on my table saw and then see right here this is where i toss a lot of the scrap pieces of wood it's just this tin containers and recently i worked on some drawers if you guys saw that video and i did a sign and i cut these pieces off and i think these will be perfect to make the little sign so i think i'm just going to cut like let me see if i can, like this part here and then use this this side as the sign and i've got two 
Okay, so that's what I'm going to use for a couple of the little signs. And then I've got some over here, like this one. I think this will be perfect for, like, the spoon and and um, utensil one. So I think that's going to be a good one. And then, ooh, here's one that is a piece of scrap. I think this will be good for another one. And I think I might use, let me see if I can reach it's like super early in the morning and I'm here in the garage, okay? So this one, it's like paneling. It's a piece of paneling, but I think if I use this side and I cut it to size, I think it will work great for another um, one of those little signs. And, and then for the bigger ones, I got this paneling in the warehouse at Lowe's, I think it was. Not warehouse, oh my gosh. Lowe's. Um, and... I think I'm going to use one of these and cut it, probably that one, and cut it in half. And then I will have the two sides for the larger signs. And I got these, uh, let me think, I think I got it for a dollar twenty-five. It was in the scrap piece of wood. Um, and I want to say it was larger. It was a while ago, so I apologize. I'm, I'm hoping I'm remembering right. But... I did not buy this new. I, I bought a piece of it that was already cut at the hardware store. And I've been using it here and there for like different projects for like furniture specifically when I when I fix furniture and paint them. But I think I'm going to use one of these. So I probably pay about $1.25 for either both of them or one of them. So I'm just going to be fair and say that for that one here, which is the one I'm going to use, I paid about $1.25. Which is not bad, guys. I mean, seriously. And I'm going to use it. So I am going to try to match the fonts and the signs as much as possible. So I am on my Cricut Design Space um, trying to fit everything in one sheet, one vinyl. Um, and I was able to do so. So I uh, recreated all the designs for each sign on one sheet. And then I cut it out on my Cricut. And after it was all done cutting, I did weed it out. I didn't show you it on the video because it was just, it took forever. <laughs> but I did want to show you here's what it looks like. Now it's all squished together because I try to fit all of them in one sheet. But I will have to cut each individual one um, so that I can fit it on each uh, piece of wood that I already have cut. And I'll show you here real quick. I did use my miter saw to cut each piece just about the same size. Um, again, I'm trying to recreate as much as possible the original inspiration one. Um, so I'm cutting it um, to size and then get started. So the first one I am doing is the larger of the smaller ones. And this is the one that has the spoon and the fork and the knife. Um, it already has this dark wood on the back. So I'm going to use that side and I'm going to tape off the edges because I want to rec uh, or I want to create some sort of like a frame around it because the original one does have a brown frame around it. I gave it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white and I let it fully dry. After it was dry, I removed the tape and then you're going to be able to see the nice frame around it. And that way I don't have to actually frame it, but it has the illusion of a frame. I then took some utensils that I rarely use. <laughs> actually, I never use these. Um, so I took them outside and spray painted them with matte black. And I gave it two light coats on each side. Once it was fully dry, I took it back inside and now I'm dry brushing some of that white chalk paint using my chippy, chippy brush. I, again, I'm trying to recreate the original Inspiration one and the, the Inspiration one had a dry brush uh, technique on it. So that's what I'm doing here. And because it was dry brushed, it does dry really, really quick. So I quickly was able to glue it to the frame and I used E6000 glue and I let it dry overnight.
For my second one, I am going to take one of the little frames and I'm going to give it two coats of the chalk paint and linen white. And then I am using painter's tape to tape off a kind of like a frame, kind of like I did with the first one. But in this case, I'm just going to um, actually paint the frame on. I started painting it with a glaze from Rust-Oleum and that was just not uh, dark enough. So after it was dry, I went back over it with an apple barrel brown and that worked better. When I removed the tape, I noticed a lot of bleed through, so I did have to go back with white, white paint and clean that off. After the white paint and everything was dry, I am now trying to recreate the original look by handwriting um, some words that says like locally grown, fresh eggs, that kind of thing that was on the original one. So I am using a permanent marker to try to recreate that look. And then to finalize things, I am going to use the stencil of the chicken that I cut out and I am going to stencil it on the, on the top in the middle using red paint and it is the red paint, uh, it's called Farmhouse Red by Rust-Oleum and is their chalked paint. This uh, cutout, um, the chicken came with a little chick so and it's really cute and I actually prefer it with it but the original didn't have it so I kept it just the chicken. Alright so for my second or not my second my third sign I am using um, another of the cutouts that I made and I am now painting it with chalk paint from Bear and this is their sepia or the pale sepia color and I gave it two coats. After that was done, I am now going to make a whole bunch of vertical lines. I am trying to recreate the, um, the design, um, it's like a buffalo check that the original had, however, it was a very tiny buffalo check so I cannot recreate that very easily it would have been extremely time consuming because of how thin each buffalo check was so I decided to just make vertical lines and horizontal lines um, to recreate kind of like the look of it without having to um, actually manually make the buffalo check if that makes sense and I am using a permanent red marker And then I am using the stencil cutout that was, um, you know, meant for this one that said good eats. And I'm just going to place it on top and I'm going to stencil it using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the charcoal tone. For the next sign, I am going to be staining it with Rarithane and the Briar Smoke, and I only made one coat.
After it was dry, I am now using the stencil that goes with this one and I'll be stenciling it with the same Pale Sepia Chalk Paint by Bear. The original design had a line on the top and the bottom in the same beige color, so I'm going to try to recreate that same, uh, those same lines using painter's tape. And for some reason, this painter's tape was not sticking to the stained wood. I think maybe it was just not as dry as it could be, but I made it happen. I just made sure that I uh, just pressed it down as much as I could as I was painting, and it worked out okay. All right, so for my next one, I am going to be painting it with the Farmhouse Red from Rustoleum chalk paint, and I gave it one coat. Then after that was dry, I'm going to be using a or the stencil. Um, this design of that mason jar or that jar I did buy off of Cricut uh, Space Design. So I did, and it was 99 cents. So I did. Uh, get that um, or I did add the 99 cents to the final cost uh, That was just for the jar the actual font and design inside the jar I did create that on my own and I am using the pale sepia chalk paint from bear on this one as well This little tiny stencil of the word farm goes inside that box on the on the design and it was so tiny I had to actually go get a the smaller sponge brush so that I can try to stay in within the lines as much as possible. It was still a little harder but um, it, it, it did better than the using the larger one of course. Alright, so moving on to my next two signs. These are the larger ones. I am using my table saw to cut the board that I showed you earlier in half. Once I had the two cut, I moved them inside and I dusted them as much as I could. I am going to be painting them using Rust-Oleum chalk paint on both of them. The one on the right, I'm going to use the charcoal tone and I actually was only needing one coat on that one. I was very happy. So I just did one coat. And I am lifting the board as you see because I'm doing the edges first and I don't want to get any paint on the table. And then after I was done painting the gray one, I then moved on to the other one and I painted it with the linen white tone and I did have to give that one two coats. After the gray tone was dry, I am now dry brushing uh, some distress lines on it with the same brush that I used for the white. I just used whatever was left over on the brush 
and then I added the lines and they look pretty um, defined now like very bright but when I sand it down uh, later on they'll get a little bit muted so this is by far the largest stencil design I have ever done with my Cricut so I'm trying to be smart on how I place them because I don't want to like place them and then be short at the bottom if that makes sense so I am going to place the top and then I'm going to place the bottom and then that way I know I got to stay in between all of those um, and then I'm just going to dry fit it first and then add one by one the vinyl and the transfer tape that I am using I have all of them actually and the paints and everything I have everything linked down below in my Amazon store if it interests you to take a look at it this transfer tape is by far the best one I've ever used and it's, if you're going to notice that I am using the same one over and over again. And yes, it loses some of the stickiness as you keep using it. But it worked. I mean, I have used this one particular you're seeing here even on projects before this one. So I, I'm very happy with it. And again, it's in my, in my Amazon store down below. And I am going to stencil it using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint again in the linen white. And I am using the larger sponge brush, brush to do the larger stencils. And then I did use the little tiny one for the smaller stencil. By the time I got down to the last stencil, the top one had already dried and you can see how the vinyl is like tearing. It's not pulling apart nice and clean. Um, it was not a big deal. I mean, the stencil was fine. It was just like it gave me some some work here removing this stencil. Um, so I learned that um, I, I, it's always best to, for me to remove it while it's still a little bit wet. But in this case, because it was such a large sign by the time I got to it, it was already dry but again no big deal it was just something i i kind of noticed all right so now as i mentioned before i am going to lightly sand with a 120 grit sandpaper over everything to smooth everything out and give it more of a an older farmhouse look to it and then dusting it off and then i'll be done with this one All right, guys, so for my final sign, this is the one that has like the, the least amount of stenciling, I think. Um, I sanded it down using my palm sander. I started doing it by hand and it was just, it was not doing it, like it was just not distressing enough. So I used my palm sander with a 120 grit sandpaper and that was perfect. So on the original, there are two lines on the top, a thick one and then a thinner one, and then two lines on the bottom again a thicker one and a thinner one so i am going to tape it using my painter's tape and then i am going to use the farmhouse red by rustoleum chalk paint to um, paint the lines and they did have a line going down in the middle but it wasn't a full line all the way up and down it kind of stopped like maybe a third up or a fourth up 
So there I was just finding the middle and then I am going to start painting it. I made the mistake of reusing the sponge brush that I had already washed from the previous one and the, it watered down the paint so I did get a lot of bleed through. This was my last and it was the most frustrating one because I had to retouch with white paint and a small brush, small detail brush to clean up those lines and I did distress it so it, it was very forgiving when after I distressed it. But man, was I frustrated, you know, by this time. It was my seventh one, my final one, and look at all that bleed through. Ugh. So nonetheless, I did make the other thinner lines on the top and the bottom. I didn't show you that because I guess it just didn't need it. So here I'm just showing you how I cleaned it up. Um, I did do two coats because it did turn a little pink, but no big deal. That's normal. Um, so I just uh, touched it up, let it dry, and then did it again. All right, so now to the final uh, stencil. I am going to put this one. This is just it says grocery list, and I'm going to place it on top. And then I am going to use the charcoal tone Rust-Oleum chalk paint to stencil it in. And then I will be distressing it a little bit using a 120 grit sandpaper, dusting it, and then I'll be all done. All right, so let me remind you what the original looked like. Just make sure you pay attention to all the details of that one. And then there's mine. I'm so proud of this project. It took me a total of about two hours. And that was here and there, of course, as you add it up. But for only $3.25, because I had the pieces of wood, the bigger piece, again, I got at Lowe's hardware store for a fraction of the cost. And using the Cricut really helped. So, but I'm very proud. I'm, I love this, the way it turned out. All right, for this next DIY, I'm going to take this piece of scrap wood. And yes, that is wood paint. <laughs> As I'm sanding it, I'm thinking, oh gosh, the last piece I sanded was blue. But it's okay, because we're going to be staining it using this chalked glaze by rust -Oleum, And it you couldn't even tell. I'm going to glaze the whole thing, use it as a stain, and then let it dry to say goodbye but i can help my feelings right now i can't deny you never left my mind and now my heart is bleeding why did i have to break i'm not going to take this dollar general little tin can it was a dollar and it's so beautiful it says home sweet home in the front i'm going to cut the back of it straight down and then i'm going to go sideways on the bottom we're going to flatten out the back of this tin can. So I am just going to cut. Now, if you're going to redo something like this, be very, very careful because this tin can is like knife. So it's very easy to cut yourself. I didn't cut myself. I was very, very careful. So once I had the two sides cut, I'm just going to flatten them out, fold them around each other, 
Then I'm going to cut some excess, like the hard edge part from that bottom part. And then I'm going to fold up that last piece. See right there, I'm just using that piece of uh, wood just to kind of... Now it gets a little tough, so I'm just going to use whatever I have on hand, my hammer, my pliers, to bend it and make sure it's nicely flush and there are no edges that's going to scratch anyone. And then I'm going to use a couple screws and screw it onto the board. As you can see, we're creating a little wall decor with a planter, and that's why I wanted to have that one side flat. Then I'm going to add some floor foam from the Dollar Tree, and then I'm going to add some green magnolia leaves from Dollar General. It was from a pick that was like $3, and I had a few leaves left over, and I used that to fill it in. And then I'll use some Dollar Tree yellow flowers that I had left over and I am going to um, fill it in. Then I added a saw hook on the back of the sign to be able to hang it. And that's it for this one, guys. A beautiful high-end looking. Aren't these magnolia leaves beautiful? Oh, I love that hunter green. And it's just so, they're so thick and so big that it fills up very quickly and it's just beautiful. For this DIY, we're going to start with these random pieces of scrap wood and signs and spindles. That spindle was from a leftover table that I DIY'd something with. These are just leftover boards and this is a Dollar Tree sign. We're all going to use them to build a little garden toolbox that could be a planter as well. So I'm going to start by taking off this little, just these end parts of the spindle because I will not need them. I am using my miter saw, but you can certainly use a miter box with a miter saw and or a hand saw, and it should be fine, but this is a little bit more of a hardwood, so I'm using my miter saw. I'm not going to take the spindle, and I am going to use it as a measurement guide to trim off some of this scrap wood that's going to eventually be the bottom of the um, let's call it a toolbox, <laughs> the bottom of a toolbox. And um, so I want everything to be the same size. And then I'm going to use this part and cut two pieces of this one by three that I had here at home already. And if you see the lights going in and out, guys, it's because my, my light is a censored light in the garage and it keeps going on and off. So don't mind the lighting. But um, anyways, I'm going to cut two of these. All right, so now I'm going to remove everything from this sign, including the that part, the part that's kind of peeling. It's so much easier to peel it off than to paint or that to sand off the glitter and paint over it, so much easier. Now I'm gonna use the, the piece of scrap wood here that's gonna be the bottom of the toolbox as a guide to know how wide I am going to cut because I'm gonna use this sign to make two sides for the toolbox. So I'm just going to score it using my blade knife and then I am going to just pretty much break it off and then sand it down so that it is smooth and I'm going to make two of these. Take a step into the river Get down on your knees Come to the mountain We'll take it in and here I'm just marking five inches into the each or each board and that way I have a guide on where because I'm going to cut angles on each side and um, that way I know where to cut and then I am going to use the spindle to um, use as a guide to know kind of where the center will be and then where I want to start that angle cut. Shelter I will find I will find oh, oh, oh. 
I am now going to sand just lightly everything so it's nicely smooth and then we can start building things and putting things together. I'm going to use wood glue as well as brad nails to put this toolbox together. So I am just going to place the, of course, the bottom part right on the bottom and then I'm going to place wood glue on each side and that's where the one by threes are going to go and then I'm going to secure them using a half inch brad nails and my Ryobi brad nails. Now I know, or brad nailer, I know not everyone is used to working with power tools. I highly recommend them as long as it's safe and you can afford them. The Ryobi brands are not that expensive. And what I like about them is just you can make so many things very inexpensively and it makes life a lot easier, but it's not necessary. You can certainly use a nail and hammer and it'll get the job done. Now I'm going to use more wood glue and the same brad nails and I'm going to place the sides on each side. You're broken and you're shattered at the point of no return. And of course, if you are going to be using power tools, always, always be safe. Read all instructions and safety guidelines and wear safety gear as needed. You pick up the pieces and you let the bridges burn. So you can see how the toolbox is coming together. Now I'm going to place the spindle right on top and again secure it with wood glue and brad nails. And now everything's going to come together when I give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. After everything was dry, I'm going to lightly sand off just a little bit of the edges. That way it'll have a little bit more of a farmhouse look. And then I am going to dust it off really, really well and add a decal that I created using my Cricut. That's just this garden. Um, that way it can be used either as a planter for the garden or it can be used indoors too with some fl uh, faux florals. Uh, but either way, I think it would look super, super cute. I'm going to add some of these faux grassy florals that I get on Amazon. I already have them on hand and some sunflowers from the Dollar General. Um, I already used them for another DIY and I had these leftover. So I'm just going to place them right in. And I think this planter toolbox turned out absolutely adorable. I love the way it turned out. That spindle just literally makes this planter. I love it. For this next DIY, I'm going to take this piece of scrap uh, wood. It came from a doorway from a house we were flipping several months ago. I'm going to remove the smaller piece, piece of trim that's on top. Then I'm going to sand it down smooth. Once everything was sanded and wiped off, I'm going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk band in the linen white.
and once that was dry i am going to sand it again this this time is to distress it i am using my palm sander and a 220 grit sandpaper and then i'm going to add some very simple handles using some dollar tree nautical rope i'm going to loop it into like a circle and then i'm going to overlap the bottom and i'm going to tie it using some jute twine i'm going to tie it three times and i'm going to make two handles I'm now going to add them to each side of the board. I'm going to hot glue first and then I am going to brad nail it so that way it's a little bit more secure. I'm going to take these vases. It's a set of three that I got at the Target dollar spot. They were all three for $5, which is a great, great deal. I'm just going to place them right on top. And then I'm going to place some greenery faux boxwood right inside, keeping it very simple, very chic, but also has like a really farmhouse kind of boutique style that I really love. For this next DIY, I am going to take this piece of scrap wood that I got at the scrap wood area at the hardware store and I'm going to give it uh, just first of all, I'm going to trim these sides with some white chalk paint and then I'm going to start dry brushing, pretty heavily dry brushing some agave chalk paint by Waverly and this is just because I still want to see some of that natural wood tone underneath. So I'm just going to give it uh, just keep dry brushing until I see what I like. I then decided to dry brush just a little bit of white chalk paint by Rustolian. This is the linen white. This is again to add a little bit more of a dimension and character to it. So lightly, lightly, I just dry brushed uh, a little bit right all over the board. And then I dry brush just a little bit of the agave color on the rim just to blend in a little bit of that beautiful color right onto that part. Now I'm going to take this bath sign that was gifted to me by my cousin. She was getting rid of some home decor she didn't want anymore. So she asked me if I wanted it and of course I said yes. So I'm just going to give it a very, just one coat, but really it's just here and there just to brighten it up just a little bit. And then once I have it where I want it, I'm going to let it dry. Then I'm going to um, start working on a hook for this bath sign. The hook that I'm going to be using is this one, but it's from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to wrap it with this jute twine. This is jute twine is from Walmart. And basically, I'm just going to hot glue the first spot there. Step, start wrapping it around. And then in some of the areas where I need to hot glue a little bit more, to um, help me with the wrapping, then I will do so.
And now I'm going to start attaching the bath sign onto the board. So I'm just going to use some wood glue and some brad nails. And I'm going to attach it to the center, but a little bit tilted to give me some room on the bottom to attach the hook. And now I'm just going to attach the hook onto the board using some screws. And that's it for this one, guys. I did add a couple of the claw hooks to the back. And I think this one turned out absolutely beautiful. For this next DIY, I'm going to take this scrap piece of wood that I found at the hardware store. It was only 25 cents and it is thick. If you do not follow me on Instagram, I ask that you consider doing so if you have an account yourself because I just showed a little haul on how I got these for 25 cents in the scrap wood area. So check out the link down in the description box where I have the uh, link to my account. All right, so I gave it two coats of Rustoleum chalk pin in the coastal blue, and now I'm just going to lightly distress it. I am going to add some vinyl on to this, so I'm making sure it is completely dust free. Again, using my Cricut, I cut out this little puppy and the word woof. And this was all from Design Space. And I'm going to transfer it right in the on the um, sign. Not long ago, you got hurt. Someone did you wrong. I can see it in your eyes. It's like your fire is gone. Across your face, it is written across your face. If you want. My cousin recently gifted me some home decor she was not going to use. This little knob here was one of them. I'm going to remove the top part. I am going to keep it. That way I can use it in any other DIY. But I'm going to round off that little part there, making sure that it's not pointy at all. And then I'm going to E6000 it as well as screw it in. Um, and this is going to be kind of like mimicking a tail, like the puppy tail. I got this inspiration from Pinterest and I thought it was so adorable. Here I'm just marking because it does have like a screw on the back that I couldn't remove. So I'm just going to make a hole right where it would fall in. And that way it'll, it'll fit snug and smooth. To finish this one off, I added two claw hooks to the back and that's it. This one is so adorable. It would be great in like an entryway where you can hang the um, leeches there. And I just think it's so stinking cute. All right, guys, so I am here in my garage, my messy garage, and um, I have these legs that I took off of a old sewing machine table, and I recently used the top to make a, a sign, and then the rest of the table I tore apart, and these are the legs, and when I was tearing it apart, it, you know, it just broke, but I still kept them because obviously I have four, so I am going to use my miter saw here and cut them all to maybe about maybe 12 inches 
but I'm going to cut them using a little bit of an angle, probably, let's see, not much, but maybe like a 10 degree angle, like maybe right there. And that way I am going to make a little plant, oops, I am going to make a little plant stand or like a little, yeah, like a little plant stand. So I'm going to use the four of the, four of the legs and then another thing that I took off from the same table was these like pieces, it's like some of the side pieces and stuff. See, like this is solid wood. Um, so I'm going to take these off on both ends and then I'm going to probably cut off a little bit more so it's not as long as rectangular, but maybe keep it, I don't know, maybe about 18 inches or so. Um, and then I'm going to build it. So let's see how it goes. All right, so now that I have it nicely cut to size, I am going to quickly give it a good sand on the legs as well as the top. This is me just showing you that tiny little um, angle cut that I made. I am sanding it because this is an old table. I just want to just make sure that it's clean and any, you know, crud or anything on it, it's out. And then I'm going to dust it really, really well. I'm marking one and a half inch from the corner this is where I'm going to drill holes so that I can put in a screw and then eventually screw in the legs on the legs I'm just gonna find the center of them all I do is basically do a crisscross from corner to corner and then right where both lines meet that will be my center and you can do this with a ruler I just free-handed it's okay so again I'm just going to pre-drill holes that way everything's gonna fit and not crack any of the wood Come to the water where you will find peace. Take a step into the river. Get down on your knees. Come to the mountain. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these screws and screw it in each hole. First. Well, take it in the view. You will find the life is. wood glue I am going to spread it out thinly I always overdo it with this glue and then I'm just going to literally screw in the legs and make sure that I'm screwing them in all the way to the angle I want the leg in so I would this in this case I want the, all the legs to kind of face kind of outward and that's why I gave it that 10 degree cut and I'll do that with all of them. I made sure that the legs were screwed in nice and tight I am going to give everything on the top and on the bottom two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk pen in the um, charcoal tone. You're broken and you're shattered at the point of no return You pick up the pieces and you let the bridges burn So come while it was dry, I am going to distress it lightly once again, focusing on the edges and a little bit on top using my palm sander and a 220 grit. Sailing with the breeze, take a step into the river where you will find peace. Where using my Cricut, I design this design. I really like the way it turned out. I'm gonna, this is gonna be, as I mentioned earlier, a plant stand, so I wanted to have something you know, kind of like plant related I don't know I'm stenciling using a makeup sponge and um this is like a little, little wedge sponge and then Rust-Oleum chalk pen and then you go through this stone I will hold you keep you warm when you stay in the night I will shelter I will fight sanded 
everything just to smooth it out and just to stress it just a bit. This is the part where I kind of messed up a little bit. I'm going to seal everything because if it does have a real plant, you know, when you water it, it's going to get water on it. So I want it to be sealed. However, I do know better. And when I was sealing it, I overbrushed it and some of the white paint smeared. And you'll see it at the end. And then to finish it off, I am going to add these little felt pads on each leg. That way it's not going to scratch any floors. And we're done with this one. I think it turned out so adorable. It sold right away, even with imperfections, with the paint running through. I think it turned out so When you go through the storm, I will hold you, keep you warm. next DIY I'm going to take another piece of board that came from that scrap wood area at the hardware store this one was also 25 cents and it was actually it's kind of like a paneling so this one's a lot thinner um, it was actually a little larger but it was broken so I just cut it to the size I wanted I'm going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk band in the linen white and then once the paint was dry, I'm going to use this wreath form from the Target Dollar Spot. It broke on me when I was taking it out of the box that I store my Target stuff. And I said, you know what, I'm going to salvage it. So I'm going to hot glue it in place. And then I'm just going to paint it using a Waverly chalk pen and the moss. And it's going to be a really rough one coat, meaning that it's just going to be kind of full coverage, but you're going to see some areas that are going to be distressed. Now I'm just going to distress using my sanding block. I'm just going to again focus on the edges and a little bit in the center just to smooth everything out. And then I'm going to hot glue the wreath form right in the center of the board. Using Cricut and Cricut Design Space, I cut out the word grateful and I'm just going to transfer it right in the center. I'm going to make a very simple bow here using three types of ribbon. This one is from Dollar General. The second one I'm going to use is from Dollar Tree. And then the third one is going to be, again, also from Dollar General. I just wanted to have different levels of ribbon. And then I'm going to hot glue it on the top of the wreath form. Right before I hot glue the bow, I just felt like something was missing. So I added this greenery that came from a pick from the Dollar General. And I just added a couple and I kind of bend them a little bit just to kind of mimic the wreath form. And then I hot glued the bow. And then on the back, I just hot glued with a lot of glue a claw hook because this board is more of a paneling. And um, any claw hook that I would try to um, put on, it would go through and I just didn't want that.
Guys, so here I am in the garage and I have this 4x4 that I have no, I honestly don't remember where we got it from. You could tell that it was somewhere, um, I believe it was in a home that we flipped a while ago and we just kept them. I think we've got maybe a couple or three of them and I have a plan to make a very rustic style centerpiece. So I want to cut this using my miter saw, but I want to cut them in like different size. So maybe one like four inches and then maybe another one six and eight, that kind of thing. So I'm going to do that. Um, oh my gosh, my light just went off. Okay, there you go. It's one of those censored ones. So I am going to cut it and then um, we'll see how it turns out. All right, so now that I have them cut to size I want, I'm just going to sand them very lightly. I am using a 150 grit sandpaper. Not for any reason. It's just what I had on hand. <laughs> you can use a 220, 180. It doesn't matter. 150 is what I found. So here we are. I'm just going to sand all sides of it, basically just to remove grime dirt because these were dirty and um, of course to remove any splinters now this is the easiest diy ever because after we sand we're about done <laughs> so i'm just kidding there's a few other steps i am going to place uh four of these in each one because we're going to create a centerpiece and i don't want it to scratch any tabletop any surfaces i always love having these on hands you can find them at the dollar tree you just Remove the paper from the back and stick them right where you need. You can also cut them to size to whatever you need. After that, it's time to start placing some decor on top. I'm going to use these little clear glass vases from Target Dollar Spot. There's three for five dollars, which I think it's a great deal. They're three different sizes and three different shapes with ads to the beauty of them. I'm going to put one on each one. I'm basically just playing around with the sizes. It doesn't matter which one goes in which one. I just want one to be taller than the other. And then I'm going to place these Dollar Tree flowers that are absolutely stunning. Has such a spring summer feel to it. And I'm just going to place about a couple in each one. And that's it. This one turned out so beautiful. So easy. Literally anyone can do. I want to cut this four by four, oh my gosh, into a squared four by four. So, um, so I want it to be, I want to make a cut as wide as it is wide otherwise. So I just want to make a nice cube with this one. So I'm going to measure the width and then cut the same amount length here. Here we are again with my light going off. There we go. And then um, that way I'll have a nice square and I'll tell you in a minute why I wanna cut it in a cube. All right guys, so here we are. I cut it to the size that I wanted and I'm just gonna uh, sand it off just a little bit. I wanna round off a little bit of the corners and the edges because we're making a farmhouse style dice. And so I wanna round it off just a little bit and of course smooth any splinters out. And then I'm gonna take uh, just something round that I found laying around. I think it came off of a lamp that I tore apart to make um, a vase out of and I kept this little ring that was on it um, don't know why I kept it but I'm glad I did because it served as a great stencil to make the dots for the dice and I did that on all six sides Your mind that 
all right so we're just about done with this one and i think it turned out so beautiful it has like a farmhouse kind of rustic look to it i really love the way it turned out DIY, I am going to take these three pieces of two by four. They're leftover from projects. This one that I'm staining here first, gosh, it was like dirty, dingy, and I didn't even clean it that much. I want these to stay very grungy. We're going to make a stack of faux books using these scrap two by four. I've done something similar to this. I believe it was during the Christmas season. This one, I want it to be a little bit more neutral farmhouse kind of look and i want this to look like it's been around like it's had so many years like it's grungy dirty <laughs> does that even make sense so i'm going to stain all of them even the one that is already painted white i will be staining it with waverly antiquing wax this is just going to add a darker base on the bottom and for the white one it's just going to again grunge it up a little bit dirty it up so that it doesn't look so white crisp once the stain was um applied i'm just going to wipe off some excess with a dry towel and then i'm going to start painting them except for the white one i'm going to leave the white one just as is the larger uh, block i am going to paint using moss from waverly and i'm going to do one pretty rough coat so i'm not looking for perfection at all and then the next one i am going to paint using um i believe it's called venetian yellow and it's by rustoleum and it's actually milk paint and um, again another one rough coat on this one once they are fully dry i will be distressing them pretty heavily using a 150 grit sandpaper and my electric sander All right, so now I want to create some straps to wrap around the book. So I'm gonna take this leftover piece of drop cloth and I'm going to cut about, mm, about an inch and a half to two inch strips. I don't know how long they are. It was just what I had, you know, it was like the length of the strip that I had. I'm gonna take some more of that antiquing wax and I'm gonna uh, dirty this up also. I wanted to kind of match the style of the books. And once I had it where I wanted, I'm just going to start wrapping them, literally just wrapping them one on each side of the books and tie them up with a knot. And then the leftover straps that I have from each knot, I'm gonna tie them together in, um, on the top. And then I'm gonna take more of that antiquing wax and I'm gonna grunge it up even more. I want these books to look like they've been stacked like this for a while. So I'm gonna, wherever the straps and the books meet, with each other. I'm gonna add a little bit more of that antiquing wax, wiping off the excess. This is just gonna make it look a little bit more cohesive and like they've been stacked like this for a while. It's, I am wiping off here some final X's. We're just about done. And I think these books turned out so grungy, so beautiful. I love them. These color really complement each other and they just look old. I love it. So today I am going to be creating a shutter barn door style wall decor and I'm pulling out this palette because I have had in my garage literally over a year. I'm going to take it all apart using the saw there that you saw me use. I think it's called a re reciprocal saw. <laughs> And then I'm gonna place these here outside. Um, it's a beautiful day today and I am going to line them up as I need them. I'm gonna take a smaller one of the boards or at least thinner ones and I'm just gonna place them on top 
and I am going to mark where I need to make cuts. I'm going to use my miter saw to make cuts and that way I'll have one for the bottom and one for the top of my barn door slash shutter. It's more of a barn door that I'm creating. And um, again, if you are, I hope this inspires you to use some power tools. I love using power tools, but always, always be careful. I'm going to sweep off some of these boards because they have been in my garage and some cobwebs and dirt, you know. And then I'm going to use a technique that I have used several times on my DIYs, and that is where I use a scraper and some paint and scrape the paint on which is odd because normally you scrape paint off but in this case i am scraping the paint on just taking very little amount of paint and i'm scraping it as i see needed i want these boards to look like they've been outdoors and the paint was chipping off and that's exactly what i got i really love the way it turned out i'm going to give you a little close up here on how i do it and a little bit of slow down so again just put a little bit of paint on the scraper and then just scrape down and you can add a little as little or as much as you want and of course you can always sand down uh, a little bit more if you add a little bit too much but i like the way it turned out so now i'm just going to place the horizontal boards and secure them using some brad nails and my brad nail gun this handle i have had for so many money months is it was from a dresser that i flipped is actually very rusted naturally rusted which is exactly what i wanted it and i just drilled a couple holes and i placed it there so now i'm going to take this wreath form from the dollar tree and these leaves it's like a magnolia leaf pick that i got at dollar general for two dollars i pulled apart the leaves now i'm just going to hot glue them all facing one way all around the wreath and then i'm going to take the smaller leaves from the pigs and i'm going to start hot gluing them in between the larger leaves some facing inwards and some facing outwards and i think it turned out just to kind of fill it in a little bit more and then i had some of these little white little leaves that i got recently at the dollar tree i'm going to pull them apart and i'm going to start threading them or not threading them but just pushing them in no hot glue needed and i'm going to do so every so many leaves and then some are going to be facing inwards and some are going to be facing outward and then i'm going to screw a screw on the top of the board place the wreath and that's it for this one guys your face it is written across your face if you want to talk i'm right here not gonna leave your side just feel free to open up when the moment's right across your face it is for this DIY, we are going to start by using some of these leftover scrap pieces of two by fours. I didn't even have to cut them. They were actually already this size. And the larger board that you see underneath, it's a scrap uh, piece of like a, it's like a shelf that I found at the ReStore. And it was only a couple of dollars and I thought it was a great find. So I'm just going to stagger these from largest to smallest and I marked where I wanted them to be and I am just now going to pre-drill a few holes so that I can attach them using some screws. Now the key here is to make sure that they are nice and level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-drill the um, holes as well on the little uh, two by fours and then I am going to place a screw first, then I'm going to level it. You see my level right there and then I'm going to carefully turn it and then screw the other one that way it's going to be as level as possible were they perfect no by all means but they were pretty pretty there pretty good there and um, the the vases that I'm gonna put at the end actually stayed up and they were pretty good and I did the same thing on all three boards and then I gave everything two coats of rust-oleum chalk paint and the linen white say goodbye but i can't help my feelings right now i can't deny you never left my mind and now my heart is bleeding why did i have to break it up guess i was just a young girl living in a dream world i thought that i'd be better off but now i pay the price 
I wanted to give this board a faux plank look. So I'm going to take this Arteza gray marker and I am just going to start freehanding here with my square some lines. And the key, because I have the boards already attached, I should have done this before, but because I wanted to paint the boards on them, then I just, um, I did it after. I'm just taking it little by little and bringing the lines all the way down. Of course, skipping where the little shelves are at but I'm um, just continuing as able. Using my Cricut, I cut out the word welcome and I'm just going to place it there in that larger area where it's in the middle towards the left side. And I'm going to stencil it using Serenity Blue Chalk Paint by rust -Oleum. And here's when things got really frustrating, guys. Look at that. Oh, it still hurts to watch it. As I pulled the stencil, it pulled the paint right off. The paint was dry. However, the I guess the finish, um, I should have put maybe a primer or sealed it. So I redid the whole process. I painted over it. I drew the line. I cut the stencil and I stenciled it after I sealed everything with a polyurethane. So it worked out at the end. These little vases come three in a case at the Target dollar spot. I'm just gonna place one on each shelf and put some flowers from like Walmart and Target on the middle and the bottom one. And I think this turned out so chic, so high-end looking, and it looks like it come, you can find it in a boutique. Love, love, love it. For this next DIY, I am going to take this piece of scrap board that I found in the scrap wood area at the hardware store. It was already this size and this thick, guys. This was such a score. It was only 25 cents. So I am going to give it one pretty good coat of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the Serenity Blue using my chalk paintbrush. While the paint dries, I am going to take this uh, piece of craft paper that I got at Michael's. I love the flower design in the middle. So I just literally freehanded like a little wobbly circle. And then I'm going to use my um, X-Acto knife to cut it off. I'm going to use some of this Elmer's adhesive spray from Dollar Tree. I'm going to spray the back and just attach it towards the top in the center there. And then here's a part where I'm not really sure. I guess it's because it didn't turn out exactly how I envisioned. But I took one of these Dollar Tree round like clear pla planters. I don't know what they are. You know what I'm talking about. And I'm going to take that marker that I used earlier. And I'm just going to start tracing circles. Now I'm going to do several, but I'm going to off center them. Now you see how I just kind of messed up there in the corner. So it was just, it's totally my fault. I should have been more careful, but in the end, I think it worked out. So you're going to see it. So just hang with me, but I do love to hear what you think. So let me know. Um, but in the end, I think everything came together. So using my Cricut, I cut out the phrase, welcome to our garden, and I'm just going to place it on the bottom. I'm going to stencil the top using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white and the bottom garden word in Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the country gray.
To finish it off, I'm just going to take one of these or a piece of nautical row from the Dollar Tree, staple it on the back, and that's it, guys. This one is one of my favorite from today, I think. I think it turned out really cute. Again, I'm not sure about the swivelly lines. <laughs> but hey, you know, sometimes when you have an idea in your mind, you just got to go for it and commit. And um, I think it turned out fine. I really love I think in real life it looks better. But again, let me know in the comments what you think. For this next DIY, I am going to take this piece of scrap one by six. You could tell that it's been around. I'm measuring the width so that I can cut an exact square and I'm actually gonna cut two of them. And I'm gonna use my miter saw to do that. With the remaining piece of board, I am going to cut it in three equal size pieces. They, I actually ended up having to cut them about 10 inch each because I am going to make a little box. It's gonna be like a little planter box. It can be used with real plants or it can be used with faux plants, but we are going to build it. It can also be a centerpiece. So I'm really excited about how this little um, piece is going to turn out. Look out, here she comes. Once I have everything inside, dusted and cleaned, I am now going to attach everything using wood glue and brad nails. So I am going to have the bottom piece and then I am going to brad nail the two sides. For the smaller sides, I did have to cut off a little bit off of them to make them a little smaller. And then now I'm just using my little mallet there to push them in and then uh, secure them with some brad nails. Because I am going to sell this piece, I am going to drill a few holes underneath or on the bottom. That way, if somebody wants to use it as a real planter with real plants and dirt, it'll have a place to drain the water from. And now I'm going to give everything two coats of Rustoleum Chalk Bin in the pale pink. Because she won't be mine, I listen when she talks, I watch her when she walks. She's given me these feelings that I've never felt before. She will never know that I love her so well. She's with somebody else and I will have to Using my Cricut, I'll cut out the shapes of a few flowers and I'm going to stencil them using several paints. Um, I'm going to use Kutsu by Dixie Belle, which is the green one. I'm also going to use one, oh, what's it called? Uh, peonies. Uh, this one, the pink one by Dixie Belle. And I'm also going to use the Serenity Blue by rust -Oleum. To finish them off, I am going to just lightly, lightly dry brush some antiquing wax in the center of the flowers just to give it a little center there. And then I'm going to add some faux flowers from Walmart and Target and I think this little box turned out so springy. And this is it for today, guys. I know there's a lot of information here, a lot of inspiration, but let me know in the comments which one do you like the most or which one stood out to you the most. If you're visiting for the first time, thank you so much for coming by. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you consider subscribing. And as always, if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. I have tons more here of inspiration for you. Check this playlist out and I'll see you later, guys.
Bye. It's too bad you'll never know. Yeah, I can't tell her how I feel because she has.